I am Gareth Wheeler. There's my good friend Oliver Platt. Ollie, how are you? Things are well? Things are well. I'm looking forward to, to speaking to Patrice. Uh, regular viewers of our show will know that I've been a bit of a Halifax Wanderers backer over the years and haven't necessarily seen it come through in terms of results yet. So I'm looking forward to, to hearing Patrice's thoughts on how to turn that around. Even when that ship went down, I'll give Oliver Platt credit. <laughs> he hung on to the very end. But hey, the future looks bright in Halifax. Some marquee signings, a lot of momentum being built and a fantastic market. And the new man in charge of Halifax Wanderers, one of the top jobs of Canadian soccer, is joining us on the program today. Patrice Geyser, welcome to One Soccer Today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to chatting with you guys. And I'm hoping, Gareth, that we can join you with Oliver to be our top two fans. So I'm, I'm here to convince you, man. I'm, I'm liking the blueprint. I'm liking what I'm seeing. And I love your appointment as new head coach of Halifax Wanderers, you've been in the game for quite some time. I've watched from afar, uh, you know, living in Ontario, being part of that Ontario soccer community. Uh, Patrice, maybe you can kind of pull back the curtain and kind of let our viewers know the grind that is for Canadian coaches and what it's like in the climate in this country when an opportunity like this arises, you know, what that means to both you and your family. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Gareth, like, uh, the, as I said, there's so many good players in this country. And for that, obviously, means there's a lot of good coaches because they're developing these players. So, you know, I've done it where I started with the U16 to the U17 to the U18, collegiate, university, every level. And sometimes you're wearing two, maybe three hats on the same day, let alone the same season. But, I mean, when you uh, love what you do, you just keep moving forward. And you hope for something to like this to come by. I mean, um, I've been uh, fortunate to get really positive results in the past few years. So, I mean, and, and this came at a perfect time as we're literally, it's a dream as the World Cup's coming to an end. You know, that, that, that period of a week or two will be something that I will never forget. Patrice, for, maybe for people who aren't so familiar with you as a coach, uh, what can they expect? What can fans expect? Maybe, and I like to ask this as well of all coaches, what are the teams you admire, the coaches you admire that kind of influence you and how you like to manage? Sure, yeah. You know, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with numerous young players that have developed that played on that World Cup team. So for me, I enjoy working with players that are driven, young, and have the ambition of continuing to move on, you know, um, are in regards of football philosophy, we're going to look for technical players that are going to allow us to carry the ball most of the game, keep the ball, and create excitement, as you said uh, earlier, for you know the best fans in the league. Um, you know, and try to entertain them, get them excited about scoring lots and lots and lots of goals, and hopefully not giving up so many goals. And you know, for me, um, I've, I've, I, I'm a die, die, die hard Barcelona fan, so. I can't help feeling that I'm a little bit connected to the Pep experience with Bayern Munich and Manchester City. So, you know, I'm all for the beautiful game and, you know, keeping the ball moving and really enjoying attacking football. Apologies in advance, in advance that Manchester United is going to knock out Barcelona in the Europa League upcoming in February. So sorry about oh that. Oh, what God. Is How the mighty of the world. Manchester Just United and Barcelona in Europa League. Like, exactly. where did it go wrong? Where did we take the wrong turn? <laughs> Hey, sometimes you need to take a step back before you yeah. take multiple steps forward. And, and that was kind of the experience for Halifax this last season. Uh, sure. I'm sure that you moved out there. Uh, what's your initial vibe? You've been busy in terms of bringing new players in as well. How have these initial first weeks gone for you? It's been amazing just to get to know the staff to begin with. Um, and then obviously getting to know our current players. So to say that time's moving fast is probably an understatement. I certainly want our players to understand that they have our full commitment. And as you've seen, we've renewed several players that I think will be important pieces. You know, I know that we're bringing in new players, but I just want to definitely highlight that we also have some excellent pieces as well that we're trying to, we're retaining and moving forward with. So it's exciting. And, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle that we're trying to put together to make sure that it's working in the best fashion. And, you know, for me, as I continue to say, it's about qualifying the person before the player. So my number one goal is to have the most positive culture and, you know, a bunch of group of uh, men that uh, are a true family. 
It is you know, potentially an incredibly exciting job in the CPL. And I, I think everyone can see that from even from the outside looking in. Um, but there have been some some challenges that have obviously, the, obviously the club has found difficult to navigate over the first few years. You know, the away travel is absolutely massive. And, and that's, I think, been an issue is, is the away for form, your air miles. Um, <laughs> very good for your air miles. <laughs> Bringing players in, into Nova Scotia as well. It's maybe not, you know, the kind of hotbed of local talent that you have in Ontario. How kind of aware are you of, of some of those challenges and, and what's what's the approach going to be to, to maybe try and solve them? Yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully as we see the league grow more and more, then the travel will be reduced. But in regards of what we're speaking about, the, the current climate and what we got going on, we're going to do our best to have a deep squad that allows us to have a league, ro- you know, more of a rotation than ever before. You know, we want guys to compete with each other daily. So when we have a home game, and then we're on the road that um, our guys are getting the proper rest needed. It's, you know, where I think there's a, a challenge, there's an opportunity. So the one thing I can say is that our team will be around each other all the time since we have this extensive travel schedule. So, well, you know, that'll help form our culture more and more. And in regards of Halifax, you know, I, I mean, I think when you're there, you can see that it's a wonderful city with a great fan base. You know, yeah, for sure, there's players that want to be in a big city, but I mean, for me, those are the players that have distractions in their mind. You're coming to us to evolve and grow and be a part of a special project and hopefully uh, take us to the next level. So if anything, I look at that as a good thing because I'm able to minimize and reduce the players that are uh, going to have distractions. Um, we'll get to some of your current players in a moment, but you know the way that fans are they always like the new shiny signings right Mm -hmm. like what's coming into the club and you made some pretty substantial moves over recent weeks lorenzo caligari a a player with with pedigree coming from a a background at psg of all clubs has played and trained with some significant players you bring in tiago coimbra another canadian that 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 has a little bit of a reputation massimo Massimo ferrin as well Uh, what do these players bring um because the resumes and kind of their background, the profiles l- look very positive for Halifax. Yeah, for sure, Gareth. And I mean, as you said, everybody loves the what's going on uh, the last day and you're as good as your news yesterday. I think I'm already been forgotten. You know, my celebration is already over of appointment, but um, I think what all these guys have in common is that they fit a theme and a culture of style of play we want to have. You know, we're going to be a technical team that's going to be able to hang on to the ball a lot and keep the ball moving. Um, You don't often see a player of Lorenzo stature um, leave and come. So I hope this is uh, a marquee signing, not just for us, but for CPL. You know, he's uh, a very young age. He's below the age of 25. Mm -hmm. He's coming here to, you know, uh, help us. And again, I don't want to say rebuild. I'm I'm looking at us as a reset because I think hopefully we can start to commit ourselves for results starting day one. So really excited to have him. I've received numerous texts about the excitement around all these players from our current players. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so exciting. And all of them are just getting, you know, can't wait to get going. What about uh, Jean Morelli, Patrice? Because this is, yeah. you know, a player last time he was in the league was, was the player of the year, the best player in, in the CPL. Um, what's kind of his status in terms of returning from that long-term injury and, and maybe what conversations have you had with him about his role? Yeah, I mean, listen, there, there's there, there's not much to say about his role other than that he's a marquee attacker and a marquee player to this organization. He knows the league. He has a great deal of confidence and leadership. You know, we certainly don't want to rush him. As you know, the injury was, uh, I wouldn't say uh, devastating, but it was an injury that we, we just don't want to rush. I mean, the amount of gains that we play in a short time span and the amount of games that we play on turf are something that we're considering. Um, so we're continuing to stay close to it and seeing, you know, uh, how, how do we get him going? And I think for us, we have to consider being our best in August and not necessarily from day one, just to make sure we're continuing to climb on a game by game basis. So, I mean, I mean, the core group of the team, I mean, Zachary Fernandez imp- impressed us all last season. Yes. You know, there, there was a transition from, from, a, from an older back four to, to a younger back five at times last season. Yeah. W- what else do you require in order to kind of close that gap? Because Ottawa last season, I mean, 
reset, rebuild, whatever you want to call it, throw it at the window going kind of worse to first in the regular season, right? So there is going to be a little bit of pressure based on precedent in order to turn things around relatively quickly. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Then I think if anything, I'm putting that pressure on myself and the demand, you know, the 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 winning culture I've been able to build is something that that's not going to change for me. So I, I think we will be very young, but we're going to look at certain guys to really step forward. I think we've all seen what Christian Campania can do, but there's a lot more to come. You know, how is he going to do when he has a preseason? How is he going to do when he's completely involved from the beginning? You know, I think a player that you saw glimpses of potential was Mo Omar. How is Mo going to do when he starts the season flying as I expect him to? You know, I expect Aiden Daniels to be a key contributor. You know, I think as the team struggled with its attack, Aiden was trying to get it going. So I look forward to seeing all these things. So, um, you know, we're going to be young, but we're going to be exciting. And we're going to be the underdogs that have a point to prove. Speaking of uh, closing that gap, Patrice, the, the target that I think everyone is aiming for is Forge and, and the way they've dominated this league yep. and catching up with them. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with Bobby Semeniotis from, you know, competing with him in League One Ontario. What, what's your kind of relationship like with him? And, and how, how do you go about closing what, what has been a large gap between a lot of the league and, and the, the dynasty he's built at Forge? They go to the same barber. That, that, that's the relationship. <laughs> yeah, really. That's it. We do, actually. <laughs> um, Bobby and I go way, way, way back. I mean, we started our battles with our 1990 team. Um, it's crazy, you know, the, the expression when you say, uh, you know, days are long, but years are short. We played a game at Ontario Soccer Center many, many years ago. That was our first one between Sigma and Bond, where it had players like Roger Thompson, Massimo Mirabelli, Kyle Becker, Emery Welshman, Don Samuel, Johnny Grant, um, for us, Milovan Kapoor, that played a couple of years mm -hmm. ago in the league. So, you know, it, it's been something that's been in the works between him and I for many, many years. He obviously broke my heart and stepped away from that uh, rivalry a couple of years ago, and I've been so proud of what he's done. Um, he has certainly set the bar, and we're going to go for it. You know, and the way we're going to do it is trying, you know, staying true to our identity, which is what's worked in the past with me. Again, super fluid, attacking football, um, really happy family that's together. If we win five in a row or if we lose two in a row, we stick together no matter what. Um, I mean, full credit to them. Uh, they've had the foresight, the organization, the resources to kind of build that pyramid within their own club, right? With yep. the relationship with Sigma and different player pathways. You've been around football in this country for a long time. We're still very much developing those pathways, right? And what that pyramid actually looks like. But for, from you coming from League One Ontario into the CPL, can you kind of see how things are building? Is, is there resistance to the build? Like, what's the feel right now in terms of developing that clear pipeline for all players across this country, providing more opportunity for players, coaches, and everyone really involved in the game? Yeah, it's, you know, you, it's kind of stuck in that half space, Gareth. Everyone wants to support the game to grow. We're coming fresh off the World Cup where, uh, you know, I, I don't know, it depends on how you guys felt, but maybe the team fell short of its expectation. For me, it was an incredible performance, you know, so it depends on how you look at it. And I think it's our job to continue to support that by giving young Canadian players a chance. So, you know, when you look at League One Ontario, the level of football continues to grow. There's some elite, elite players, but at the same time, there's a growing amount of teams. There's a growing amount of leagues. So it's becoming a little bit spread out. You know, some people want to see their players jump and move forward to the highest level and succeed or fail, but at least they deserve that from all they've done. And some are, you know, maybe a little bit more resistant and they don't think the timing's right or the place isn't right. And you know, from what I was brought up is that when you have something real in front of you, that's something that you've always dreamed of, you grab it and you go for it for full confidence. So it, it, it is growing. And I, you know, I've watched these combines the past couple of weeks. You watch some of these young players. Um, we're on the right path for sure. For sure we are. We just need more teams. So, you know, if, if Halifax can succeed with a, you know, a newer coach who's come from League One, hopefully that'll urge all these other cities to move forward because, um, the coaches and players are here. They are. Well, and, and we're seeing that more and more now. And 
none more so than the guys who you know you're very familiar with who are at the World Cup. Um, you know, <laughs> just just reflecting on all the time you've been in Canadian soccer, what's it like to see players you've then coached? go and play on, on the biggest stage in football. And some of them, you know, in, in Arthur Johnston's case, like just a couple of years ago or a few years ago, we were watching this guy play for Vaughan in, in a Canadian championship tie. It's, it's incredible to see the rise they've been on. Yeah, you know, Oliver, when we speak about development, development is something that we talk about at 13, 14, 15. But when people don't realize that that never really stops, it just keeps going, you know, and and it, it was 2019, that Alistair played against Halifax out of Halifax, got a red card, uh, the fun story there. But um, I mean, he, he performed so well. And here we are four years later and he's in the SPL team of the week back to back, right? So, you know, development and consistency is so important for young players, but you have to have that self-belief and continue to going. If you're a good player, you work hard, someone will notice you. So. You know, and I look at Kamal, I thought for me, he was one of the bright, bright spots for the yeah. national team. You know, unfortunately, Dane never got a chance to get in, but looking at him and his prominence at uh, MLS and, you know, being a part of journey of one of the most celebrated Canadian players with TFC, Jonathan Osario, you know, spending some time with him before he went there and Mark Anthony K. It's crazy. And you see them play against Luka Modric. You know, I'm trying to pinch myself and really find out if this is a dream or it really was an incredible opportunity for our country. And uh, so uh, before we let you go, I mean, you've worked in development in this country. It, it's kind of a two part question. One, I always think that younger players are better than their predecessors. Just the way that the game is going and the opportunity yeah. that young players have, there's potential there. But there's one question that Canadian soccer fans continue to ask. Where are all the center backs? Is there a pipeline? Are they coming, Patrice? Because things have completely shifted. Then on this, the, the, my second question is, is about where young players choose to go. We, we've seen a number of young players, um, you know, get selected in the MLS Super Draft. Some players get affiliated with MLS clubs. S some are picking USL, MLS Next. Like, there's a bevy of opportunity. But they need to play, don't they? Like, how do you make the case to players – that this is the best place to go. Like we've seen a number of CPL players move on to European opportunities now after this season. Like you need to play and you need to be in the right place at the right time. Like how does that conversation go and, and kind of how do you pinpoint and make that case to young players? So I'm not sure which one you want to answer first. I usually I'll start with the second question. one because I'm, you know, I'm having that conversation daily right now with our potential recruits that we speak. Right. And I'm very passionate about that. And I think, you know, Gareth, the way I look at it, there isn't one way to success. There's multiple ways. You need to find out what are your non-negotiables. And for me, I tell every young man, what you need to talk about is comfort. And not just, you know, comfort that you're going somewhere where it's easy. Comfort with your decision. And you got to go somewhere where you trust the team around you. That's the staff and the players. Once you're there and you're all bought in, things are going to work out, you know. Um, Tejan Buchanan went to university, MLS, and then went abroad. Uh, and now he's yeah. continuing to grow, and they're talking about Napoli. There's players that have just left from high school and have gone abroad. Uh, Jonathan David. Everybody has different success, and it's going to come at a different time. But, you know, it, it's imperative that you trust it and you do homework with the people that you're working with because playing time is, is something that doesn't come easy. And you're investing your career with that team, but that coach needs to invest the adequate minutes that you earn or, and, and what you do with it is obviously up to different players. So it's extremely important. And again, I can't stress that there isn't one way, whether it's through an MLS Academy, whether it's through a club, let's say selfishly Vaughn or Sigma, and you move on to somewhere else. But I think if you have self-belief, hard work, mm -hmm. and you do your homework about your next place, and putting your future in good people's hands, good things will start to happen. Um, in regards to the game, the game is changing incredibly, as you see. I think what we are seeing is that um, the days of the big physical center backs, excluding our friend at Liverpool, Virgil van Dijk, is, is become far, and those guys are difficult to find. What we're seeing is a lot of uh, midfielders that are turning into center backs because they just have composure and a better ability on the ball. So, you know, I think like the old days of Barcelona where you have like 
out of 11, eight central midfielders that are playing is, is <laughs> what's coming back again, right? So you're seeing a Christian Campania, a six-foot center back, that's very elegant, and now it's about him evolving and becoming, um, you know, an alpha male and uh, a physical dominance as a center back. So, you know, I think with your young age, you start to evolve and you start to find out who you are, you know, and you put the pieces together. This would have been the perfect time for me to play. If you find a hot tub time machine <laughs> anywhere, please send it my way. Um, Gareth, we're still looking for... More center back, so you know, don't don't tease me with that. My foot speed, <laughs> Look my stamina, elsewhere. nowhere near. Yeah, yeah, I'm a hard pass at this stage. Let's put it this way. Look, um, it's a pleasure chatting with you. We need Likewise. to get the entire One Soccer crew out for a game in Halifax, Please. live on location. It has to happen this season, Patrice. Yeah, it has um, to. It has to. Look forward to having you guys then. And I'm just going to tell people I know Patrice Geyser when I show up in Halifax and see what happens. And go you may there. you may want to say Lorenzo ahead of me, and you know have everyone. <laughs> you may have better success. They may put you at the very end. They may put you at the end zone if you say my name. But yeah, brilliant. For sure. uh, Patrice, uh, enjoy the next few weeks before the chaos Thanks, really guys. kicks in with the start of the new season. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Patrice. Thank you.